All right, hey VEDA people. Uh, today is VEDA day 21 and uh, the question of the day is what do you get nostalgic about when it comes to the pre-smartphone era? So there are a couple of things I get nostalgic about and uh, you know one of the things that people take for granted with uh, smartphones is how easy it is to send text messages and uh, how easy it is to communicate uh, with software beyond uh, just regular telephone software. So, for example, with a smartphone, uh, or, well, with a, a regular cell phone, uh, you might have had free nationwide uh, long distance calling with your plan, or you might have had uh, unlimited texting or something like that. Uh, typically not from what I saw in, in that era. Uh, text messages were sometimes still billed on a per message basis and it was very expensive. So people were looking for a lot of alternatives. Uh, also, if you wanted to call someone outside of the United States in the pre-smartphone era, uh, it could get very expensive, especially if you were calling cell phones. So uh, I've got some devices. Oh, another thing is that even though they had kind of uh, web browsing on a lot of these feature phones, it wasn't quite as good as what we're accustomed to now. On a smartphone, you pretty much have a full featured desktop browser scaled down. It may have some uh, touch capabilities or the ability to zoom in on areas of text if you tap on them or you know, page scaling with pinching and stuff like that. But there were a lot of problems yet to be solved. So these are some devices that I doubt, I mean, I don't know, maybe some of you had them, but they weren't all that common. Uh, in fact, they were kind of hard for me to find at the time. They were, they tended to be kind of expensive uh, for an initial purchase, but um, I don't know. I think they, I think they were ahead of their time and they, uh, you know, there are things that we could still be using today. It's just uh, they weren't popular enough and a lot of people pay for cell phone plans anyway. So uh, I'd be interested in seeing in the comments just a quick survey of uh, what you pay per month for cellular service. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious about that because I, I personally feel that kind of cellular service is outmoded. Uh, a lot of cellular traffic is actually transported over the internet. So what you're kind of doing is you're paying um, a you're paying a cell phone carrier like uh, in a, in the United States AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, maybe Sprint. Uh, if you're very unfortunate, uh, as I was for quite some time, um, you're paying them to operate essentially VoIP software that uh, essentially communicates uh, from your phone to the tower uh, over a digital system, but then from tower to tower, it transmits uh, over internet cables. Uh, it depends, there are, there are different vendors, but you know, one way that for a lay person to do that is to just uh, you know, fire up Skype on their smartphone and uh, then they can essentially convert it into internet. And so as long as you have Wi-Fi and Skype uh, you can call anyone else in the world with Skype and it doesn't cost you anything beyond, you know, the cost of your, your hardware, um, the cost of your phone and that. Plus you can also call people who aren't on phones. Whereas with cell phones, it, it takes hacks to do that. So you need to have, uh, you know, like some kind of bridge between the phone system and the computer. And, uh, you know, it's like, why even involve the phone system at all, as far as I'm concerned? Just go computer all the way. Uh, my uncle uses Magic Jack software and he pays a small fee to connect into the phone network. Um, I prefer Skype just because, first of all, the client is more full featured than a lot of other clients. You have more features all in one spot, but then also it's available on more platforms. So if I want to talk to someone and they go, oh, I have Linux, then it's, I can't be like, oh, sorry, I can't talk to you. I just go, oh, there's a Skype client for Linux. And they just uh, enhanced, if you go to web.skype.com, they just made a lot of enhancements to it. So it's very much like a desktop client. If for, every reason, if for, if for any reason you can't install the desktop client, 
uh, web.skype.com will get you into any of the chats that you need to be a part of. Uh, and it'll also, uh, if you're using the Edge browser, it uses a technology called WebRTC, and so you don't even need to install any plugins to do uh, video or voice phones, and uh, that support is also coming to other browsers soon, according to Microsoft. So something to check out, I'll put the link to Skype uh, for web down at the bottom. Uh, it has lots and lots of features, and I think it's great that it's out there because a lot of people can't install it. Another cool feature is as long as you get a link uh, I've actually sent links to people to chats and they didn't have a Skype account at all and they didn't want to go and set one up and all this kind of stuff. But as long as they had the link, they could pop in kind of as a guest and join the conversation without setting up an account. And they seemed to really think that was cool. So sorry, I got out of frame there for a second. Um, so on to the two devices that I'm nostalgic about. Let me show them to you. Uh, so I guess, first of all, I'll show you the one that's kind of Skype related. So this is not a smartphone. Uh, this is uh, an SMC Networks Wi-Fi phone. So I don't know if you can, let's see if it zooms in there. So it's a little phone and it's got a little uh, directional stick there for navigation. It's got buttons and a keypad. Um, has a battery compartment in the back and everything plus USB charger and headset port. Um, but yeah, it's essentially a little a little tiny phone. And the interesting thing here is anywhere that you have Wi-Fi in the world, uh, you could go and pop this into your suitcase and uh, go to a hotel or whatever, and or go to like a restaurant that had Wi-Fi or you know just a library, wherever. And you could connect this to it and it would sign you onto Skype and you could call anyone with Skype in the world I don't know if you could call landline and mobile phones with it. Um, it was a couple years ago, uh, but on the back of it, it actually has a little label. This is a uh, Skype certified product. Let's, there we go. So it's Skype certified. So yeah, it was pretty cool because I mean, it was a little pricey. I mean, it was a device in its own right. I think it was like one to $200, maybe more when it was new. Um, I got this one secondhand from someone who did a lot of international calling. So they just had it around their house and then they could just pick it up and, you know, call anyone, um, call anyone on their Skype list. And it may still work. Uh, this one had some hardware problems with the buttons and I don't know if I could take it apart and fix them. I'd have to see what the issues were, but it was pretty cool because you didn't need a cell phone plan, which in the pre-smartphone era and even today, cell phone plans are really expensive. So once you bought this one-time cost of a couple hundred bucks, then you could talk anywhere in the world and it was unlimited. So that is something that I thought was really great. And I would actually like to see some dedicated hardware Skype devices just because, uh, you know, a lot of times I might want to use my phone for something else. I mean, my phone isn't a phone anymore. As we talked about in yesterday's vlog, it's, uh, I was talking to someone in the comments, They, or actually it was on Google Plus of all things, which I almost never see any dialogue there. Um, but he was saying uh, he calls his uh, a screen, which is a very generic term. Uh, he calls his a mini tab, like for a mini tablet. So um, I like the term mobile, he calls them devices. But yeah, screen might be a good thing. But anyway, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a little computer. I can hook it up with Continuum and use it as a computer and I can still t take calls and stuff. That's one of the nice things about this. But, you know, if you just want to make a quick call, it's a, it might be nice to have something like this around um, just to kind of give, you know, a lot of homes, they just have a phone on the wall somewhere where if you want to call someone, order pizza or whatever, everyone knows how to use it. It's also good, uh, you know, it'd be nice if Skype supported 911 in the United States, which is the emergency services number. Um, Cause then you could just pick up one of these devices and uh, call for help if you needed it. And as long as you had Wi-Fi that was working, you were good. So on to device number two. This I think is way cooler. Cause you know, just putting Skype in a hardware phone, that's not an awesome, That's that doesn't really take much to do. That's just, you know, a device dedicated to run software and you connect it up to um, Wi-Fi and you're good. This right here is a watch. Uh, now, as you can see, I've got a, uh, I wear a Microsoft Band 2 uh, smartwatch 
And uh, I like that I had a Fitbit before, but uh, this has a way better sensor package. Uh, the menus are all better. Uh, I think I saw them on sale at the Microsoft store for like 175. So it's not all that expensive. Plus I'm a Microsoft developer and there's an SDK. I could download uh, the SDK and write my own little app for it. Um, yesterday I got uh, 10,000 steps. So I'm curious also if any of you have fitness trackers, uh, maybe share like the best number of steps you got this week or something post the link in the comments. I'd love to see, uh, you know, the ability I'll, I'll post one of mine too, from yesterday, I, I hit 10,000 steps and I'll post a link so that you can kind of maybe get a feel for, uh, you know, some of the, what the, what the interface looks like when you're trying to tell friends and stuff, uh, what you're doing. Cause sometimes people like to have little walking battles and stuff like that. But anyway, before modern day smartwatches, they had, uh, we had these, and uh, this smartwatch, the Band 2, communicates via Bluetooth to my cell phone. So it relies on me having a smartphone in order to work. And it works with uh, iOS and Android devices as well. So that's cool and all, but you need to have a smartphone uh, to get the most of it. You can sync it to a PC and come home and sync it every night. Uh, so it doesn't require one, but for a lot of the features like getting notifications of email and that kind of stuff, it helps to have a Bluetooth connection. This one though, was really cool because it had coverage in, it was mostly in major cities. This is a Fossil WristNet FX3001. Uh, and it was powered by a service called MSN Direct, which was from Microsoft. And what they did is in every city where they had service, they would contract with a radio station. And a lot of people hate these giant radio conglomerates, but I think they had a deal with clear channel communications. So every city that had a clear channel communications station, Microsoft contracted with them and off a little bit to the side of the normal programming, uh, the normal frequency, there's this edge band and it can hold, it can carry data. And so nowadays, like if you have a radio, that has a display that maybe uh, scrolls like uh, the song title and station identification, that kind of stuff. That's usually transmitted on kind of a sub on a sub carrier band. So uh, this they had uh, so each phone each watch had a unique ID, and all of the watches could receive all of the content. And so you'd get uh, current weather. Uh, of course, you had the current time for the city you were in. Uh, you would have uh, sports scores, like all kinds of news that is common, like news of a broadcast nature. So the types of stuff you'd have, in fact, you'd have breaking news headlines, all this kind of stuff. But you also had two other things. You had uh, calendar items. So you could have uh, essentially an outlook. You could synchronize that to the band network and it would send out your calendar appointments. Um, and only it, each one was coded specifically for your band. So there might've been a whole bunch of bands in the city, but um, only your band could display your calendar appointments and stuff like that. The other cool thing they had is back with MSN Messenger, this had integration with that. So my wife had mes MSN Messenger and she could send me messages uh, and they would just pop up on my watch. Uh, so it was very much like today where someone can send you a text message or uh, like a Skype message and it'll appear on your band, uh, except this was cool because back then before smartphones and before cell networks were, were as mature as they are now, you actually had to, um, you actually had to have good cell coverage uh, in, like I was in buildings uh, on the Ohio State University campus, many of which were in the basement. A lot of these are old fallout shelters. I mean, it was hard to get a cell signal in a lot of these buildings. But since this was on FM, anywhere you could get a strong FM radio signal, you could get breaking news coverage and stuff. So I'd have, like I'd get alerts on my watch about breaking news and stuff. And I just go, oh, such and such happened. And all the people with cell phones, they weren't getting alerts because their their cell phone was dead. Um, so 
This was really cool in a lot of ways, uh, just technologically. I encourage you to check out uh, the MSN Direct service. They, they took a weird direction on it with marketing. Uh, so in addition to smartwatches, which they had, um, oh, and one of the cool things is on New Year's Eve, this had, uh, you could change the watch face on it, which was really cool. Something that, you know, the Apple watches and stuff do now, but this did it like in 2003, I think, maybe even before that. Um, I'd have to go and look up the date ranges, but it was, it was at least, probably around 2003 and before. But on New Year's Eve, you would go and you'd look and about 10 seconds, like it would, it, there was like a, a channel you could subscribe to that was a countdown until New Year's. And you could have it all throughout the year. But right before uh, New Year's, like 10 seconds before, it switched to an animation of a ball dropping in Times Square. And it was just really cool uh, because like it would fall down and then at the very end it'd like flash Happy New Year and all that kind of stuff. So we spent quite a few, like we'd go to a New Year's party and they'd have the TV on, which uh, the TV broadcasts are sometimes delayed a little bit. This was actually synchronized uh, to, you know, the atomic clock and everything. So this had the accurate time and you could even see the delay. So a couple of times I was at New Year's Eve parties and the whole party was like huddled around my watch, watching the little ball drop on my screen. Meanwhile, a couple seconds later, you actually see the ball drop on TV. So that was really cool. Um, it's also had uh, inductive charging, which uh, a lot of smart, like this, uh, this is a new, uh, this is a, sorry, Microsoft Lumia 950 XL. It's uh, the latest and greatest uh, phone from Microsoft and uh, it has wireless charging. Uh, this right here had wireless charging, it had a cradle, and so you wouldn't have to plug, there are no ports to really plug anything into it. Um, you would just set it down on the cradle. I couldn't find the cradle, I was actually gonna probably try and charge it up and stuff, but you would just lay it on the cradle every night and it, it kind of hung up like this and so you'd kind of set it on it like that and it would charge inductively. So there's a coil here and a coil in the cradle and that would pass the current through and charge the battery. So this was just super awesome. It has, uh, let's see, it has five buttons. I'll try and bring it up. So it had uh, like three here on this side and then it had another two over here. And so you could, those were navigation buttons. So you could press and hold different buttons in different configurations to select things and scroll through the channels. And it was just amazing. Now, the they ended up using MSN Direct. They branched out, they didn't, you know, the, the watches weren't as successful as I think they probably should have been. They were great for travelers because um, like I remember one time my dad and I were going to an event in Indiana and Indiana uh, at the time had different time zones than Ohio in the summer. So I don't think they used daylight saving time. So uh, we were on our way and we were on Ohio time so I kind of thought we were going to be late, but as we were driving, um, I got within range of the transmitter of the radio station in, I think, Indianapolis. And since we were headed to Muncie, which is, you know, much closer to the border of Indiana than the center where Indianapolis is. So we were probably, I don't know, over a hundred miles away. And the signal was strong enough that it updated the time on this watch and it reminded me of the daylight saving change and it and my dad and I were kind of getting hungry after traveling and stuff and we wanted to catch some stuff after noon. It reminded us that we actually had enough time that we could go and stop and grab a bite to eat before we wanted to get at the event. So it really, it, it was a real time saver, ha ha ha, uh, pun intended. But um, yeah, if you were a, a, like a traveler traveling between the cities where it had coverage, which, you know, major cities with airports like you know, New York or LA or whatever, you just fly and as you're flying over the cities, your watch is adjusting to the current local time of the cities you're traveling over. And um, then when you land, you've got the current local weather, like the multi-day forecast. I mean, it just really helped you plan stuff. And that kind of data, you know, it's the same for everyone in a city. So I really wish they would have kept that technology and started adding it to other devices like uh, PDAs, which were kind of like the smartphones of the day, uh, except they oftentimes didn't have cellular service, but they could have embedded this little FM receiver 
and they would have had MSN direct service there and you would have been like even if you didn't have a cellular or a Wi-Fi connection you would have been connected to some of your inbound messages your calendar uh, and then also all of this news and weather and sports information that people uh, really like so and I, I think that'd be possible today because uh, this phone right here has an FM receiver in it uh, now it's not a special MSN Direct one, but it would be so cool if Microsoft could bring back MSN Direct technology and then include it in laptops and you know just every device possible. And that way, on every device possible, you'd be able to get like weather alerts for the city and just all. I mean, you you know, people are pretty well covered by LTE and cellular coverage now, uh, but it would just be so cool that. Even if you didn't have service, or even if you weren't near Wi-Fi, you'd have access to this, you know, basic level connectivity uh, and news and current events on what's going on in the world. So, anyway, this right here is the one that I really missed the most. And uh, even though I have a Band 2, there are a lot of things it did because it was completely standalone uh, that I really miss. And it's kind of funny because when Apple came out with their watch and a lot of the Android watches, you know, they really acted like this didn't exist. So for people who had these, it was just like, oh, come on, guys. You're, I mean, a lot of those devices were like a decade after this. So anyway, super cool. Uh, I think I, I bought this one and... Uh, like it, one of them started malfunctioning because it, it was kind of like prototypical stuff. So I got, like I exchanged it and then there was another one that I got. So I ended up having like, I probably had five different ones. In fact, I think I have one from Swatch when they were ending the service. I found they, they, someone was like liquidating them. So I think I have like a brand new inbox Swatch one somewhere that has never been worn, never been used. Uh, it was like brightly colored. Um, so it was really cool. Now they don't work because Microsoft doesn't maintain the MSN direct network anymore. Uh, so there's, you know, it would just be a regular watch. I, th I imagine you could turn it on, charge it and just display the time with the default, um, like the default screen that it came with. But yeah, it pretty much wouldn't work. So. Anyway, in keeping with the, I, I told you sometimes this would be a bit of a tech blog and that was definitely it today. But uh, yeah, MSN Direct Watch, Fossils, WristNet, really incredible in its time and even today. It's just, I don't think most people, I, the watches were kind of expensive. I, it was probably two to $300 for one of these watches. So it was kind of a large outlay for the average person who maybe buys like a $20 Timex or something but it was awesome having one. So um, anyway, that's it for today. Sorry, it was a long one, but I hope it was interesting. And if you think so, then like it, because that's the only way I know, unless you comment. And if you comment, I hope you like it too. But uh, also I added a little button down in the corner to make it really easy for you to subscribe on certain devices, but please subscribe and I'll try and keep more of this interesting stuff that uh, hopefully you never have heard about and never saw anywhere else, but I'm sure you can do a search on like YouTube and maybe find some more in-depth things about MSN Direct and uh, maybe even these Skype hardware phones and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks for tuning in yet again, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you tomorrow.